Josh Garrels is a singer, songwriter, composer, who is also a friend of mine. And the other night, he sends me a text, it's like 9 p.m., and he says, hey, I'm finishing this song in the studio, and my wife really thinks you need to hear it. And so I play the song, and my reaction is, holy cow, this is the anthem of this hour. We got to put this on the podcast. Welcome back, friends, to the Wild at Heart podcast. I have a very special treat for us this week. Going to introduce a friend of mine, singer, songwriter, composer, in just a minute. Uh, he's releasing a new song right now this month that I think is is for all of us. And we'll listen to it. And we'll find out why. But first, let's take the pause that we always do. Let's let go of the day, let go of the week, get out of the chaos, and recenter ourselves in the presence of God. So, Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, I give everyone and everything to you in order to have you. What do I need to release today? What do I need to release this week to you, God? Just take a moment, friends, and just begin to lay it all down. And we do this in order to recover our union with God. And so we pray, restore my union with you. Father, restore our union. Jesus, restore our union. Holy Spirit, restore our union. And we ask you to come and meet all of us in this week's podcast. Amen. So friends, I am really excited to introduce a friend of mine to you. Now, he's known to many of you already, but we haven't had him on the podcast before. And so I want to welcome Josh Garrels to the Wild at Heart podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, Josh, good to see you. Josh is a composer, singer, songwriter, beloved to many, many people. And he and I met through a, a Wild at Heart event a couple of years ago and become friends. And I, I love Josh for many reasons. I think his music is absolutely brilliant and, and soulful and so full of Jesus. But I love Josh because of his life with God, because this, this is a friend of Jesus. You know, you meet those people in the world that you go, oh, your, your religion is not religion. Like, you're the real deal. And so, yeah, just great to get a chance to bring you to our audience here this week, Josh, and the song that you've released that we're going to get to in a moment. But I am intrigued about your friendship with God. Did you grow up like knowing Jesus and in a, in a faith environment, or was that something that came to you later in life? My parents in the Jesus movement of the 70s got involved in like a Christian cult called The Way. So when I was like oh, four, yes. they sold like their home and everything they owned. And we moved on to a commune um, with The Way for about four years. And yeah, because it was a cult, it imploded, spit my family out the other end um, with no fellowship. Yet at the same time, my parents still, the belief of like who Jesus was and the, the fact that the cult had sort of um, taken away the deity of Jesus we were never part of like a mainline church growing up. It was sort of those people who are wrong. And then my family sort of secluded with no fellowship. So me and my older two sisters, especially shot out in every direction, um, just counterculture, drugs, music, you know, always had a sense that God was real, that the God of the I Bible actually, was real. Yeah. I actually do know. <laughs> I do know that story personally. Yeah. 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 So it wasn't until... I was in college that I met him, you know, because my older sister got radically saved and she led me to him. But I'd never like heard the gospel, you know, before then, really, you know. 
So wow, yeah, wow. Okay, so there is a kinship here in the sense of you and I are kind of both coming in from the outside into Jesus and His world and His kingdom. Yeah, and then was music always a part of your life, or did that come in and later as well? It was my dad's uh, music teacher. So there's that, you know. <laughs> so there are always just piles of instruments around the house and music with a love language in my family, making each other mixtapes for Christmas and birthdays. And um, so much so for me, it was an idol, you know, this uh, an idol in the sense that it really defined me, as it does a lot of teenagers, you know, like music, culture, subculture, whatever music I was into, be it punk rock or something, was more than just an identifier. It was like a a body suit. You know what I mean? It's how you present yes. yourself, the music you're into, you know? To totally. So coming to faith was actually like letting go of music as that idol. And I think, I was like, yeah, like a 19, 20 year old, I was like, well, maybe I just won't ever touch that again. You know, I'm, I follow the Lord now. So it wasn't this um, aspiration of mine. It was just something I breathed in and out throughout my life up to that point. But he like transformed it. You know, he took this thing that was destructive and he it was still there, you know, the love for it and the fact that I would be drawn to it remained through the years, you know. But I can yeah. say it was never an aspiration like, man, I want to make music for a living. It just was in me to do it and sort of made a way for itself. And at some point you need to pay attention to like, when I do this, it's effective and I love it. Uh, but it wasn't necessarily an aspiration, which is interesting. You know, it just was this thing in my life that had to be cleansed. And yeah, yeah. 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 I think a lot of us who kind of came out of the rock and roll, drugs, sex culture did have to have a period of like cleansing music. I remember going yeah. through that as well. And for me, I actually like walked away from all music because I just, for me, it was so tied up in, you know, the classic rock and Led yeah. Zeppelin and all that. And then there was a period when music came back in for me. And it sounds like there was a period where it came back in for you, but like full force, because this is what you do now and you do it all over the world. How did that happen? Um, you know, let's say early on as a believer, there were a lot of what I would coin as like supernatural experiences, you know, in the sort of new honeymoon phase with the Lord, there were just a lot of times where he was really gracious to just answer prayers immediately or do something that was so recognizable that you can't not pay attention to it, you know, um, a way that he's always spoken to me or real like um, picture impressions has always been a way that he speaks with me, you know. And I don't know a better way to put this than early on, I could see sound through the eyes of my heart or through the eyes of the spirit. And it was all like the colors of the rainbow and they were intertwining with each other. But it wasn't just like, oh, that's a cool picture. Somehow something deep in my spirit knew that sound itself, uh, frequency, was this thing to be explored and that it was in me to explore it. That's, I don't know a better way to put it, but it excited me. And I knew like, oh, that's, mm. wow. You know, like sound is this dimensional thing that I'm, I'm being given some like, not mental understanding because I'm actually not an, a great musician in the sense of like composition and theory. I know very little about those things, but there was just this deep internal sense of something in me understood that sound was deeper and more uh, dimensional, powerful than I realized, you know, and that was sort of calling me to explore it, you know. So that yeah. would be sort of like a, a mystical experience with the Lord dealing with even sound itself in my spirit, man, you know. But yep. there were these times, like you're saying too, I had all this music that I grew up with and some of it was very, very much attached to memories and experiences and real darkness and sin in my life. And uh, I would call it the altar of my knee where I'd be riding around the car. And, you know, I had like a, a set deck at that point. And I'd be listening to these old mixes I made of hip hop or punk rock or these songs. And if one would flip me into a memory, 
of something, the man that I was, or even elicit the feelings I had then of like, music can make you as an angsty teen can make you feel prideful, lustful, violent. And I had all these songs that would bring those up. And as soon as I recognized one of those was calling forth like pride, lust, violence, I would like take it out of the tape deck and smash the cassette on my knee and be like, Lord, not that one, you know? So it was just the sense of anything that was drawing that out of me, I would destroy it, you know? Yeah. Okay. So that was, so my, my, yeah, that was my like, you know, break down the idol. I'm not going to like subject yeah. myself to this anymore, you know? Yeah. See, that's it. There's your love for God. There's, There's. that all in. I am yours, Jesus, yes. 100%. And it's just one of the things I love about you and, and love about your work. I mean, you just uh, you had a busy fall. You were the headliner for Lauren Daigle and her uh, mm -hmm. tour around. And, and so you have this opportunity, but you want to keep Jesus at the center of it. Mm. And I love that about you. Josh and I have been riffing just in conversations uh, about where we are in the world, about just friends that we're seeing struggling with their faith, you know, kind of the climate of the moment that we're in. And then sorry, out of the blue, you send me a, a text a couple of weeks ago and said, Hey, I'm about to release this song. And I uh, thought you'd want to hear it. Mm -hmm. I play this song and I'm like, Holy cow. It's just like, this is the anthem of the current moment. And I, folks are, we're just going to play it, guys. Like, we're not going to tease you on this, everyone. We're going to play the entire song right now because I want you to hear it. And then Josh and I are going to come back and sort of unpack it together. Saints and psalmists, but I will sing my song for you anyway. Cause you're all I have, Lord. You are the way, and I'll always love you, and I will wait like a watchman. To my wrist, 
Then lay your head upon my chest For I have called you friend Because you kept your lamp burning through the night And you made your garments pure and white Through my good sacrifice Josh, it, it's just a killer song. Thanks, man. In so many ways, I mean, musically and composition and your vocals and the lyrics, like what you are bringing to the world, like where to come from? What's the story of the song? I mean, I've been following you and your podcast, you know, since we've become friends the last few years. But you putting words to what we've all felt, you know, coming through the lockdown, you know, like the time we're living in, it's more than just, you know, those difficult two years. Um, oh man, let me gather my thoughts. We're just, uh, sometimes I'm impressed by something more than having words for it. Yep. Can I ask you a couple of specifics? Yeah, that would help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like you talk about, um, the song's about hanging on. It's about Please hanging me. on to faith. I'm going to keep my lamp burning. I, I choose my love for you, even in the midst of a really difficult moment in the human story. And so you, opening in the song early on, you talk about the trauma that seems to be sweeping people away. And, and even maybe friends of yours. Yeah. Like, are you seeing that? Are you seeing folks you love and know turning? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think through crisis and trauma and holding that in, in tension with a promise, you know, that the Lord gives us all these promises that we're to stake everything on. Yeah. Yet the narrative, the story around us telling us a completely different story, where maybe in the past those two felt like they could coincide a little more. There was room for kind of both stories at once. You know, the, there's this world around us and we love the Lord and these things are sort of coexisting, which is sort of a carnal Christianity, you know, um, a lukewarm Christianity. And we had the, we were seeing a shaking, you know, in our culture where those two things can't coexist. So. I've always felt like the positive side is it's going to make the strong stronger. But the sad side is we all have like many friends who have walked away, you know, who have been yeah. in some ways destroyed in the last three to five years, you know. And it's been a trend that I've seen since like 2010, 2011, you know, this, yep. this walking away and uh, Back then, I attributed it more to just, well, I'm in my 30s now, so these people who are zealous with me in my 20s when we had nothing to lose and we were idealists, real life hit. They had some kids, they had a job, some things fell through, they got divorced. It's just that. We're just at an age now where 
people are getting divorced, people are falling away from the faith. But if I'm honest, it started all the way back then. And this internal sense within that uh, it was more than just a season of life now that I'm walking through. There's some truth to that, but I've only seen that wave swell, 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 you know, to, to the point that to make it through, to make it through this, mm -hmm. we have to like hold on to his promises, to life with him, you know, because we can't, those two things that seem to be able to coincide, like uh, engagement in the world storyline and then this sort of private story with the Lord and having those two dance with each other. And it's it never should have worked, but maybe we were tricked into thinking it worked. But I think especially now it doesn't work. There's almost... So the next verse being, you know, the darkness is upon us, the death of saints and psalmists, you know, that perhaps that's melodramatic, but at the same time, we're entering a time where to fully follow him is going to be abhorrent, I think. Yeah. To stand on his promises and the truths that he's given us that are going to live on forever past our little cultural moment here in history. Like to stand yeah. on those is, is becoming abhorrent, you know, which is why on the second verse I say like this truth is getting stranger than the lies around us. You know, I think the big thing for me and my wife, our language for it is like staying locked into the Lord's story to his storyline, to his narrative, which is more true than anything else we've found, you know. And it's been seven, ten years of us disentangling ourselves from this storyline in the world, you know, of um, yeah, sort of hipster Christian dumb where we love him. We love him. He's the center. We say he's the center, but then there's there's all these things satelliting around the center that at times I was more concerned with those things, be it next album, the next tour, getting invited to this thing, making this amount of money, you know, like presenting myself this way on social media, getting this many followers, getting inertia here and building this thing. And it's, um, yeah, realizing that's not his storyline at all, you know? Um, so becoming disentangled from that slowly but surely getting locked into his, his storyline, his, which is his truth and what he's doing, is more and more distinctly <laughs> separate from what is happening around me in the world, you know? Uh, yeah. And choosing yeah. more and more to go all in on it, you know, which is this, um, you know, I think the term would be surrender. So, okay, Lord, like, I trust that your storyline is the true storyline. Your promises stand despite the trauma and tragedy that's happening all around me, despite the sickness, despite the betrayals, you know, despite, oh man, just the carnage we're seeing that like, yes, his promises will stand, you know, through it. Yes. Choosing yes. to hold on to that, you know, choosing to hold on to that, even though we're, we're headed through some like bumpy waters, some turbulent seas, you know, that are going to affect some of those around us in negative ways, you know, which is why I appreciate what you guys are doing because you guys are yeah. trying to throw life vests out to people who are about to drought, you know, and that's, I've told you before, like, man, I'm all in on this, you know, like, let's, let's, let's throw the life vests out there. Let's throw are as many life vests as we can throw out there. Yeah. Totally. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. And, and okay. So a couple things in what you said, so right on. Like the narrative of God is is really getting very um, in tension and greater and greater tension with the narrative of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, values, identity, all of that. And I think there was, there were, you know, you go through periods of human history where things are a little more peaceful or quiet, where those two narratives can maybe come back together for a while and we can kind of do Jesus and do the world and they don't feel as, as opposed as yep. they do now. They don't feel as like diametrically opposed and it's just pulling and pulling away. And so your call in this song to keep your lamp burning, it reminds me of the song that you had on your earlier album, Chrysaline, uh, the song Faith, Hope, and Love. <laughs> and it was 
I was cracking up because I was listening to that song a couple of years ago and it's, we're going to put it in the show notes as well, everybody. Uh, we're going to put this song in the show notes so you can find all this. But um, that song, Faith, Hope, and Love, like you just start out of the gate with don't give up. Don't give up. Like f- hold on to faith, hold on to hope, hold on to love. Just throwing life jackets out to people. Mm. I was just cheering in my car the first time I heard that song, because I'm like, that's it. That's the moment that we're in. Like, Mm. don't give up. Faith, hope, and love will see you through. It's kind of like the only safe place in the world. Mm. And then then you swing back around with this latest release, uh, which is called Watchmen. We didn't tell people the name of the song, but everybody, you can find this in the show notes and, and grab it on Spotify. It's called Watchmen. And just the idea of keep your lamp burning through the night. Say something about that. Like say more on that. Cause I just so love that imagery. Yeah. I love that yeah. line. Well, there is something me and you have talked about like fortitude, this sense of, if I'm honest, I'm a, I'm a fickle man. You know, I'm prone to passion and zealousness. I'm built that way. But I also, a day or a week later, will be like, what was that thing that happened last week? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like I'm going to get involved in this other thing now because this is where my attention is, you know? And so a sense of yep. in the watches of the night when you're tired and all you want to do is go to bed and he might not even come tonight. Why would I stay up all night? You know, he probably won't even come tonight. No, I'll know. Like, I'd rather just do this other thing, this other creature comfort, you know, when yeah. the calling of the virgin in that parable is like, stay awake, you know? Yeah. Or the watchman on the wall, stay awake, because like people's lives depend on you staying awake and you will be held accountable if you fall asleep on your post, you know? So every person, as we know, has a call of God. And if we fall asleep on our post, how many lives are affected by that, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a silly analogy, but I just watched mm-hmm. It's a Wonderful Life for the first time when I was sick over Christmas. And part of it might have been that I was feverish and really emotional, but I just bawled and bawled and, <laughs> and bawled. It's such a good movie. <laughs> but in that movie, he's shown, like, this is what happens if you didn't exist. Look at all these lives that are affected. Yeah. And he's just crying, and he begs for mercy that he could re-enter his life. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, that sense that, you know, if we, God's so made it that there are lives that we're intertwined with that are affected by us, whether we yeah. like it or not, man. And if we fall asleep on our post, not only is it hurtful to us, but I think the Lord in his love is like, I intertwined your life with all these people and they, they're they suffering because you decided for your creature comfort instead of like, doing what I put in you to do and staying awake and being diligent and keeping your lamp burning all the way through, all the way through, you know? Yeah. I think a supernatural prayer that was put in my heart as a new believer, I know it was supernatural because it was beyond me as like a 19-year-old, was to end well. And I prayed it ever since, often, like, Lord, help me to end well. And the older I get, I see that um, just statistically, Statistically, not many keep their lamp burning until the end, you know? Right. Uh, statistically, not many end well. And I don't want that to bum people out. If anything, just like me begin to pray, like, Lord, help me. Help me keep my lamp burning. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Don't let me lose connection with the Holy Spirit. Because essentially, we know that's the oil, you know? Keep filled up. Keep filled yes. up, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I find myself praying recently, Holy Spirit, refill my tanks, refill my lamp. You know, the in the parable, the 10 bridesmaids, five are wise, five are foolish. And the foolish ones, they're not evil. They're just um, too casual about mm. their life and about the walk with God and about the hour that they're living in. They just treat it too lightly. And they're like, oh, whoa, it is the moment. And oops, I'm out. And oh, well, you know, yep. they, the five bring extra oil. I think that's really interesting. It's like, God, 
give me everything I need to reach the finish line mm. with you, like mm -hmm. intact, intact marriage, intact heart, intact moral integrity, yeah. intact life with you, you know, because we, we, we were talking about the falling away and the Barna data and what you were picking up in 2011, 2012, you know, 13, 14 is actually now like they know that they went mm. back and looked at a bunch of data and it was from 2000 to 2020 that the 50% of serious followers of Jesus walked away. Wow. And part of it is the great falling away. Part of it is the the spirit of apostasy that's that's in the world right now. It's so it's so freaking strong yeah. that I will wake up some mornings and I go, man, if I were to make agreements with this, if I were to go with that narrative, like I could be an unbeliever in about three minutes. You know, I can feel that. So part of it is massively spiritual, but then it, the other storylines are, yeah, like you were saying, the divorces and and the addictions and and just the heartache and the trauma taking people out, and and that's why. You know, the earlier song, Faith, Hope, and Love, this song, Watchmen, oh, I just think it's the anthem for the hour, Josh. I think this is this beautiful invitation to, to people to hang on, like, don't quit, don't give up on God. And yeah, keep your lamp burning, be a watchman, like, choose God above all things. Hey. And so I, I just want to thank you for this song. I mean, it's it's amazing. And as soon as I heard, I'm like, oh, I, I'm going to, I think it was like early in the Beatles days when, uh, you know, fanatic radio stations would just play one of their songs over and over and over and over and over <laughs> again. <laughs> I want, I'm almost going to do that with this song. It's going to go, we're just going to play this every week on the podcast and ask people if they have any questions. <laughs> I appreciate okay, it. Okay, now let's just pray together, everybody. Yeah. yeah, so thank you. Thank you for your love for Jesus. Thank you for choosing the narrow way, choosing the all-in way. No better way. <laughs> There's right? no better way, you know? Yeah. 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 And so everybody... Um, Get on Spotify or wherever you get your music. It's called Watchmen. You can get the lyrics and stuff in the in the show notes. And we're also going to post that earlier song, Faith, Hope, and Love, because it's it's a, almost like a forerunner to this song. Really beautiful. It's beautiful musically, which then allows it to enter into the soul. Mm. And that's what's so great about this. It, it it gets the heart and soul engaged into the soulful experience. And the honesty of it, but that the hope and the and the resilience of Jesus will see you through. Hang on, yes, yes. hang on to Him. So, thanks, pal. Thanks for coming on. The uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>